Hello everyone. Welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. Myself Muhammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become an IT pro really fast. So the topic of today's video is .NET Core versus .NET Framework. What's the difference? So without any further ado, let's get started. What should we choose for our next application? .NET Core or .NET Framework? That is the question which comes to mind while working on the .NET technology. Well, in today's video, we will answer that question. First of all, let's discuss the structure of both first here. So let's understand it. Earlier, we had .NET Core and .NET Framework separately and the difference was in the base class library. Both frameworks had their own base class library and by base class library we mean that all the arrays, string manipulations and the system input output operations were defined in it. And we use that in our classes or you can say in the code which we develop. Well, the problem occurs when someone tried to shift from one framework to the other. For example, you were working on .NET Core and you tried to shift your application to .NET Framework, it couldn't be possible because both had different base class libraries. Even Microsoft had to face this problem because whenever they had to develop a new platform, they had to create a new base class library for it. At the lower level, we have a base class library and above that, we have app modules and in app modules we have a different things like in dotnet framework we have a windows form asp.net and in dotnet core we have asp.net core and we have uwp to get rid of this problem in which we have different base class libraries microsoft introduced a new platform with the name of dotnet standard it had the common base class libraries which could support the both .NET framework like it was supporting the .NET framework and .NET Core at the same time. It also unified the whole base class library level and then it was made compulsory for every platform to adhere to this standard so that migration could be easier. If we talk about the .NET standard library, it is the set of APIs which all .NET platforms and implementations must follow or adhere to. So in any new .NET platform come in future, it should must follow it. So let's say if you have developed something by following the .NET standard platform, you can run that application which you have developed on any of the platform. It can be .NET Core or it can be .NET Framework. But the condition is they must adhere and follow the .NET standard rules. And because of that, we can now have any platform used and we can migrate it on .NET Core, on .NET Framework until unless they are following the .NET standard rules. And that was all about the .NET standard. Now I will talk about some feature and I will try to differentiate both platform on the base of those features. First one is open source. Well, in .NET framework, we have only certain components which are open source. But in terms of .NET Core, it is completely open source. If you talk about the cross-platform support in .NET framework, it is compatible with the Windows operating system platform. But in .NET Core, it works on the principle of build one and run anywhere and it is compatible with many platforms like Windows, Mac and Linux. Now, in terms of performance and stability, .NET Framework is less effective in terms of performance and stability as compared to the .NET Core. And .NET Core offers high performance and stability. Android Development .NET Framework does not support the Android development or any mobile application development. But .NET Core, it is compatible with open source mobile application platforms, for example, Xamarin. So through the .NET standard library, developers use Xamarin's tool to configure the mobile app for specific mobile devices such as 
Android, iOS, and Windows. If you talk about the packaging and shipping, .NET Framework have all the libraries shipped together in .NET Core. It gets shipped as collection of Nuggets packages. Last but not the least feature which I'm going to talk about is development model. In .NET Framework, whenever the updated version gets released, it is first deployed on Internet Information Server in .NET Core. When a new update gets initiated, it gets updated instantly on one machine at a time and thereby it gets the update in new directories or folders in the existing application without affecting it. And because of that, .NET Core has a good and flexible deployment model. So these were some of the features on the basis of which .NET Core and .NET Framework differentiate from each other. Now, if we talk about the environment or the ecosystem of both these platforms, then the .NET Framework supports the Windows and web application. We can use Windows Form, WPF and UWP to build a Windows application in .NET Framework. And ASP.NET MVC Framework is used to build a web application in .NET Framework. But now we have some functionalities or you can say some updates through which we can work on mobile application as well in .NET Framework. Now, if we talk about the ecosystem of .NET Core, it is the open source and cross-platform framework that is used to build application for all operating systems including Linux, Windows and Mac. .NET Core framework supports the UWP and ASP.NET Core only. We use UWP to build the Windows 10 target and mobile applications and ASP.NET Core is being used to build a browser-based web application or web application in simple words. So that was all about the ecosystem and environment of both these platforms. Now I will open my Visual Studio and I will create a project for each platform. So stay with me. So here is my Visual Studio 2022 preview version and in here I will create two projects so first of all i will click on create a new project and here i will search for asp.net so i will write here asp.net and down here i have all the options which are related to asp.net but first of all i am going with asp.net web application in .net framework platform and here it is so i will click on it and now i will click on next and here I have to name my project. I will name it as Framework Platform. And in solution name, I will name it as Framework versus Core. I will click on Create now. And here we have the .NET Framework. I'm going with the latest one, which is 4.8. We have two other options here as well. I'm going with the latest one. And now I will click on create. I'm going with MVC. MVC stands for model view controller. So I will just click on it. And here we have different other options as well. I'm going with no authentication and I'm going with configure for HTTPS. I'm not going with Docker support. So I will click on create here. And now my project will get created for .NET framework platform we have to wait for it because it will take some time in terms of some packages and some files and here you can see our project is being created i'll go to my solution explorer windows let me readjust it i will readjust my window here okay now i will create another project into this one for that i will right click on it and here I'll go to add and here I will create a new project and this time I'm going for .NET Core so I will search here ASP.NET Core okay down here we have all the options which are related to .NET Core either we can go for the simple web application or we can go for model view controller as you remember when we created a project for .NET Framework, we went for Model View Controller. This time again, we will create a project with Model View Controller. 
I will select this option and now I will click on next. Here we have to name our project. I'm going to name it as core application and again I will click on next here and here we have some other settings which we can do but I'm going with the default one as I do not want any authentication type and I'm going with HTTPS. So I will just click on create and now my project will get created and then we will move ahead and we will discuss some things and here we have our both projects created this is the core application which is based on dotnet core and this is the framework platform which is based on dotnet framework okay now let's discuss some of the things which are common and which are not common in both these projects in dotnet framework project we have the references if i open it here you can see we have a lot of references available in here but in dotnet core application we do not have references but we do have the dependencies i will open it and here you can see we have two further folders this is the analyzers and in that we have further more folders or you can say further more directories and in those directories we will have further dependencies and we have frameworks here as well and in frameworks we have microsoft asp.net core dependencies and in that we will have a lot more dependencies as well so if i open it and here you can see we have whole list of dependencies available here i will close this one and in this one same again so i will close this one as well and i will close my dependencies so if we talk about the common sense dependencies makes more sense because dotnet core application depends on these dependencies and it makes more sense than having references for our project but both of these offers and serves the same purpose in dotnet framework we have references and in dotnet core we have the dependencies in dotnet core project we have a folder or directory with the name of www root if i open it here we have three more folders first one is for css which is also known as cascading style sheet and then we have a folder for javascript and then we have one more folder okay these are all the static folder and all the static files will come into this folder which is www root and your html file can also come here icon for our application is also here which is under www root so if i close this one now let's talk about dotnet framework in dotnet framework we do not have www root directory but we have our application icon in the main folder which is right here but in dotnet framework we have several other folders here like we have ape data app start then we have contents then we have fonts then we have scripts and fonts is the static folder which could have come under the css folder but we do not have css folder here so that is why it is here as a separate folder so if we talk about the simplicity dotnet core is more simple and more easy to understand as we have less folder to go through and every folder makes sense as the name suggests as you can see we have app data app start folder but in dotnet core we do not have these folder so that is why we do not have to cop up with these folder which are extras in dotnet framework project so this is one of the reason that dotnet core is more preferred over dotnet framework now if i open my controllers folder in dotnet core project here i have a file so i will just open that file here it is these are some of the libraries which are included by default and down here we have some methods and we have some other code here as well here we have index and privacy methods so if i go into my view folder and if i go into my home folder here you can see we have index and privacy file and here we have index and privacy methods available here now i will close this one now let's go to the controller of our dotnet framework project here it is i will open it and i will open this file in this file again we have some methods now if i go to my view and go to my home folder and here you can see we have about contact and index file and here you can see we have about contact and we have our index methods which are created here 
So in terms of functionalities, both platform .NET Core and .NET Framework works and follow the same structure and same rules. There is not a lot of difference between these two in terms of implementation. So that was all about in terms of the Visual Studio. So I will close this one and now let's move ahead. So the question still remains there and that is what to choose between these two platform. Should we go for .NET Framework or should we go with .NET Core? I have some points on the basis of which you can decide that which is the better one and which is the suitable for you and for your environment and for your application. If we talk about the .NET Framework, it is a better choice if you do not have the time to learn and go for new technology. It is better choice if you are building Windows client application using WPF or Windows Form. And if you have nearer release schedule for the client, then you should go for the .NET framework. If you are already working on an existing application and you are extending its functionality, then .NET framework is the one for you. If you need production ready software, then .NET Framework is the choice. If you do not want to deal with the continuous changes and upgrades and you require and need a stable environment to work on, .NET Framework is the one for you. And last but not the least, if you already have an existing team with .NET expertise and you are building an application on it, then .NET Framework is the better choice for you. .NET Core is a better choice for you if you love open source and if you want to target your application on platforms like Windows, Linux and Mac and you like to learn new things. And last but not the least, you are not afraid of experimenting as .NET Core is not fully matured yet. And we have less community support of .NET Core as compared to .NET Framework. Yes, we do have a big community support but as compared to .NET Framework, it is not yet there. So these were some of the factors on which you can decide that whether you should go for .NET Framework or .NET Core. And that brings us to the end of this video. In this video, we have talked about the .NET Core and .NET Framework in very detail and I created a project for each in Visual Studio 2022 and I have shown you that what are the differences and what are the common things in both these projects. I hope you have learned something new in this video and if that is the case, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon as well so that you do not miss any future videos from us. If you have something to ask, please leave a comment below. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care. We will see you in another video.